So the purpose of shooting this video is to give you guys a bit better uh, view into my lift here in my garage, uh, how it works, how it was constructed, uh, and a bit higher quality on a tripod so you get some stable video. So the first thing I'll go through is the lift platform itself. And I'll insert some other footage as I'm talking through and going over measurements and whatnot as well so you can see in detail everything uh, with regard to how this is all put together. So the lift itself is 59 inches wide by 31 inches deep. It is constructed from 1x2 HSS steel, 8 inch wall. I custom fabricated the lift platform myself. So I'll lift it up and just show you what it looks like in under so you can get an idea of how this base is supported. So here you can see the lift in the fully up position. It actually goes up a little higher so it's flush with the floor up top. But either way, I'll turn it back down a bit so you can see here's the 1x2 steel frame, like the box, and then I've got spans going across. So I've got three spans plus the ones on either edge. And this is all MIG welded together to provide a nice sturdy base. So to ensure that there's enough strength in this base, I've got these chain extensions in and they're eye bolted through on the corners like this and that provides extra stability and extra sturdiness so this thing doesn't bend off when you have a lot of weight on it. I have it attached to a 440 pound slash 880 pound electric cable hoist. It's a 120 volt hoist and it's mounted up top and I'll bring you up and show you that again shortly. But that's mounted to the top of the frame here in the middle via a U-bolt and with the cable down through the catch block and back up to the lift again, it gives me 880 pounds of lifting capability with this lift. So the channel system I use to keep this on rail so it goes up and down uh, in a straight line sort of thing is a Unistrut 1 5 8 channel in combination with the Unistrut trolleys that fit and ride inside the lift in these channels. So we've got trolleys on each corner, one, two, three, four, and those rod up and down in the rails, keeping the lift in place when it goes up and down. So now just to finish talking about the platform itself, it's just got a simple piece of half inch OSB and these eye bolts on the bottom keep it in place and it's just cut out to fit around the parts of the back frame. And then along the outside of it, I've got this weather stripping. So that way when this is up in the hole that's up overhead, it seals up and it allows me to heat the bottom of my garage without losing too much heat up through that hole. One other thing I'd like to note is that usually the switch for this, the cable is only about five to six feet long when, uh, like when the, uh, you open the box up and you get this brand new lift, the cable hoist or whatever. These are only five or six feet long, so what I do is I just cut it and put in some extra strands to lengthen it so that way it reaches all the way down. So when my lift is up, I still have access to my controller and I can bring the lift down. So now I'd like to just give you a quick look as to how this works. So I'm going to hop on the lift, bring myself on up, and then I'll bring you guys up after and we can have a look at how things are set up, up overhead. So now that we're up top, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, look at the storage space up top. So this is the upper part of my garage. I've got about 10 by 20 by 5.5 feet high of storage up here. So the lift gives me great access to this. So, you know, putting things like a set of tires up overhead, bicycles, my snowblower during the summer so it's not in the way downstairs in my garage. Having this lift makes all of that extremely easy. So it's one very good benefit to this is that you can put heavy loads up in your storage and get them out of your way sort of thing. So here's the actual lifting mechanism itself. Like I mentioned, it's a power fist, 440 slash 880 pound cable hoist. Like I mentioned before, when it just goes straight down to the hook, you'll be able to do 440 pounds. And when it's doubled back through the catch block and hooked back onto itself, it'll lift 880. So when you get in closer to the lift, you can see that this is supported on a 4x2 
rectangular tube stock beam that's 3 16th inch wall. Uh, when looking up the point load that this can support, it's up over 3,000 pounds at the span of 10 feet, which is where I have it now. So it's more than good enough to support the loads that I'm lifting with this 880 pound hoist. One other thing worth mentioning with regard to the brackets that are used to mount this hoist to this beam is that these hoists usually only come with a bracket that'll fit a 2x2 two two piece of steel through. So I had these brackets fabricated at a local metal shop. So they made them 4x2 for me. And one thing to keep in mind is when you say 4x2 in steel, it's truly 4x2. It's not like wood and it's less a half inch. It's full on 4 inches by 2 inches. So here's how my beam is supported. Once again, this is a 10 foot long, 4 inch by 2 inch HSS rectangular tube stock beam with 3 16 inch walls. What I've done is I've got two 2 by 12 boards laminated together so they are construction glued and also screwed together. There is a notch cut out at the very top in the middle where the 4x2 beam sits in it. That's not connected or fixed in any way. The weight of the beam itself keeps it in that notch. It's the same on the other side as well. As for how the weight is actually loaded on this lift, these legs either side also sit on two more 2x12 two pieces of board that have been laminated together as well, so glued and screwed, and then mounted to the floor. So any weight that's bore by this lift and then beam is transferred down through these posts and into the floor, so the lower part of the trusses. Now, I do have some cross member pieces here and here, which these are also bolted to, but these don't bear the weight. These are only here to keep these upright. Here is how I supply power to the lift or to the cable hoist. You can see this is just simple 120 volt power and I had my electrician when he wired up my garage for me put this here specifically for the lift. So I guess the one final thing I'd like to talk about while we're up top and hopefully I don't block the light is I had to extend the lift rails up into my attic so that way the lift could come all the way up so this rides in. I just got a few extra inches here or whatever that I never get up into unless I'm actually taking the lift out of the rails. But to make sure this is supported I mounted 2x4 here and on the other side as well and those then let me carry or continue the channels from the downstairs on into the upstairs portion here and for added support with regard to a forward torque I've got these extra supports either side as well and that gives me a good and solid rest position when this lift is all the way up. So now that we've got some details with regard to how things work when this is in the up position I'm going to head on back down and we'll clue up down bottom. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you guys about, because this has been something that's been brought up in a few of the comments on my other video, are some of the safety concerns with a system like this. Uh, one of the ones that gets brought up is that there are pinch hazards. Like anything where you have things closing or passing in close proximity uh, through surfaces, there's always going to be a pinch hazard. So if you're riding up and you got your arm hung off and you keep the button on, it's going to snap it off on you. If I'm going up and I've got a rake and it falls down, if I don't stop the lift, that rake is going to get cracked off going up through the hole. So that's concern number one. The second concern I've had a couple comments on on my other video are with regard to this U-bolt and how much weight it can handle. I usually try to make sure that I'm only lifting between 300 and 400 pounds at most. I like to keep things, you know, to about half of maximum capacity. And in a lot of professional and engineering type uh, applications, they go even more overboard than that. It might be good for four or five times. But in this case, I think for my use, this is more than good enough. And like I mentioned, for three years usage, I've had no issues with this. When you're lifting something up overhead using these style lifts, you need to be mindful of what you're lifting. If it's too tall, as in the thing you're lifting is taller than the space between this and your ceiling or your roof when you get up top, there's a high likelihood you're going to push the roof off of your garage or off of your shed. Ask me how I know this. If I wasn't quick on the button to let it go, I would have pushed the boards clean off my roof. 
And that's just something I was not being cogent of what I was doing. I was distracted. And you should never be in that state when using this type of machinery. Like we mentioned, there are safety concerns. Using your common sense, being deliberate, and staying focused will make sure you don't have an accident when you're using these type of systems. So the last safety concern that some people have brought up has been with regard to fall arrest. Now I currently don't have a fall arrest system in place on mine, whether that would be for me to link myself up to and have that connected to the beam overhead, or if it would be something connected to the beam and then sturdy enough to catch, say, the lift frame itself if that came down. And then you want to take into consideration uh, what your maximum loading is so you can have a fall arrest system that would stop that load from falling and crashing to the ground. So the majority of views that I get on my channel are directly related to the attic lift that you guys are sitting on now. It's my most popular video. Uh, so if you're into lifts and whatnot, I know it might not be an attic lift, but here's a motorcycle lift that's airbag actuated, so it uses an air spring out of like a transport truck to actually lift the load. And this is actually something I've built over the past few months, and the reason I built it is while well, you're looking at it, sitting on it, one of the other things that I do, and the majority of the content of my channel is actually with regard to restoring old Honda motorcycles. So I've got an ATC 70 that I've done. I've got an XL125 from the early 80s that there's a full video series on. And now I'm actually working on this uh, 1981 Honda C70 Passport. So I want to thank you guys for watching this, uh, I guess, more detailed video with regard to how this attic lift is put together. And if you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe. There's always new projects going on in my garage, whether I'm building lifts or restoring vintage Honda motorcycles, and I'd appreciate it if you come along for the ride with me. So, thanks for watching.